For as long as humans have existed, we looked up to the most powerful force of nature we could see with our own eyes, the sun. Hopefully looking at it indirectly, unlike the island boys. It doesn't matter whether you were a bushman in Africa's Kalahari Desert or a Roman emperor. All humans of every culture looked up to a seemingly yellow disk in the sky of which their existence was dependent on, and of which our existence is dependent on to this day. Now the sun is actually white, given that white is a reflection of all visible light, but due to atmospheric scattering, it looks yellow. So I'm just going to refer to it as yellow, as sometimes the perception of the truth can be even more important than the truth itself. Most children will learn that yellow is a primary color, which can be mixed with red to create orange, or mixed with blue to create green. But that system only works for paints with pigments. The yellow you are seeing on your screen is actually a combination of red and green. After all, the cones in our eyes only directly detect blue, red, and green. Any yellow you see isn't really yellow, but a combination of the aforementioned green and red. Yellow, overall, has a fairly long wavelength, although not as long as red and orange. Keep in mind that if you print out any of the stills of this video in yellow, the color yellow will be a primary color. Just look at the color ink you inserted into your printer. When it comes to the ways humans describe words for colors, most languages will start off with black and white, then red then either green or yellow. Green and yellow tend to be interchangeable in certain contexts given the fact that they're the two most important colors for vegetation. Early hunters and gatherers and then farmers needed to be able to perceive vegetation for food and shelter. As our knowledge of the world evolved, so did our languages. You eventually would get different words for yellow and green. Yellow, like orange, is usually the product of pigments called carotenoids, which are used during the process of photosynthesis in numerous plants, and by and large are seen in various forms of food that you eat. After all, so many of the foods that we eat are yellow due to these pigments, such as corn, the most widely produced food in the world. Generally speaking, the reason why leaves of angiosperms turn yellow during the fall is that the temperature decreases, the chlorophyll is reduced, which usually makes the leaves green, and as a result, you get more carotenoids being visible, and as a result, there is more yellow. With the massive exception of sunlight, yellow is oftentimes the product of pigments rather than optics. Take, for example, the neon day gecko, which has a silver-blue body, which is a product of optics, namely reflection, while the yellow golden head is a product of pigments. Throughout much of human history, yellow was quite revered. After all, one of the most sought after minerals was and still is gold. Gold is not particularly practical, but it is very beautiful, and by and large it tends to look like a metallic shiny yellow. Since yellow is the brightest non-white color, the brightest color with a true chroma, its metallic version is considered to be the most coveted. Just check out my video on the history of the metal gold, if you're interested. In evolutionary biology, there is a theory, well, perhaps just a hypothesis, if you could even test it, that shininess is considered beautiful because shiny things look wet. And to an ape on the dry African savanna, water was one of the most utmost important resources. Yellow is perhaps the shiniest true color as a result of its radiance, which by and large is seen as producing a sense of happiness. In most human cultures, the color yellow usually symbolizes positive values and attitudes of joy, surprise, and optimism, most likely due to its bright color, which is appealing to a diurnal visual species like Homo sapiens. Yellow also plays a very important role in Chinese culture in particular, as the yellowish silt and sediments of the Himalayas flowed into the Yellow River, producing excellent soil for farming that would become the heart of Chinese civilization. One of the earliest Chinese cultural heroes is known as the Yellow Emperor, 
a mythological person who is said to have invented a number of civilizational breakthroughs such as the calendar and water wheels, and land wheels for that matter. There are some exceptions though. Yellow is sometimes associated with sickliness in some cultures due to jaundice. Jaundice turns the skin yellowish due to excess pigments caused by a liver disease and a relative lack of red blood cells. The negative connotation might also be due to yellow being the color of sulfur, which smells like rotten eggs. When combined with black, yellow produces a very high crown contrast combination that signifies danger from the natural elements such as wasps, as well as man-made creations such as nuclear waste. To this day, despite its mostly positive connotations, yellow is one of the least favorite common colors, usually the second least common favorite color after brown. Perhaps at the end of the day, this is just due to the color yellow being the color of, well, piss, and brown is the color of shit. And that's how I'm going to end this video. Nothing profound, just piss and shit. Thanks for watching.